How's it, guys? Welcome back. I know it's been a while since I made a video, and I've got many excuses, but they don't really matter. The point is, I'm back. Now, today what I'm going to be doing is changing the rear brake pads in my 2016 or 15 Nissan x -Trail. It's been something that I've been meaning to do, I've been holding off, and now they're at a point where they need to be changed, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do that. Now, there's a couple of steps you want to take before you start this process, and I'm going to walk you through each one of those steps one by one. But something I've learned from experience, certainly with this car, is that I need to, to make sure that the brake reservoir wasn't too full, because when I changed the brake pads and compressed the cylinders, I actually had a little bit of spillage last time I did this. Now, brake fluid is very corrosive, it'll take the paint off your car, you don't really want to spill it. So what I would suggest is before you even start this process is just locate your brake fluid reservoir in your engine bay. Make sure that there's enough room in it for a little bit of the fluid to go back in there without overflowing. And if there's not, what you can do is just take a little syringe, draw some of it out and set that aside until you're done. And when you're done, you can put it back into that reservoir. Now for me, I'm not too worried. I'm not going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, I've got some space in the reservoir because it's filled out last time I did it, and those were on the front brakes. Now the front brakes, you've got to compress a lot further. It's got two cylinders in this car that we have to compress to get the new pads in, and the rear brakes only have one. So I'm not going to be compressing as much back into that. Secondly, it spilled last time, so I know there's enough room, because the excess already spilled out. And thirdly, my car's actually going for a major service tomorrow, and they will be replacing the brake fluid anyway. So I'm just going to put a little lap underneath there, just in case, and then I'm going to carry on at the back. So in my car, this is the brake fluid. You will see it will normally say on the cap at the top, and you can see through it and you'll see exactly where the level is. So I'm just going to put a little lappy in there, and that's just, just in case we're not going to have any spillage onto the ground or any other, any other components within the car. Now, whenever you're working on a car and you're going to take the wheel off, you want to make sure that you're being safe. If this wheel is off and this car falls down on you, you could get very, very seriously injured. So it's very important to work safely. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the wheel. We're going to use the jack that came with the car to do that. That's what I have. I don't have like a, a workshop jack or anything. And once the car's jacked up, before we take this wheel off, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a jack stand underneath the car. So you want to find somewhere under the car that's part of the chassis that's not going to get damaged by putting the full weight of this corner of the car back down on it. So you're going to find some solid piece of the chassis. You can always put a block of wood on top of it to make sure that maybe this is not the right shape. Just to make sure that this car is safe. And with this jack stand underneath, it's going to be able to support the car safely. You don't want to have to rely on a jack like this to keep you safe when you're working on a car. It's, it's very dangerous and you could get seriously injured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the nuts before I jack the car. That means that there's going to be less of me trying to get these nuts loose uh, when it's up on the jack. Then I'm going to find a spot, well then I'm going to jack it up, find a spot to put my jack stand in, drop it down onto the jack stand and then I'll remove the wheel. Then I know that I'm going to be safe when I'm working on the car here. Now every car has got a place that's designed to accommodate the jack that comes with the car. And if you look underneath the car you'll normally find it. Yeah, it's got two little notches, and that's you know that's the place that's designed to be used to jack this car up by the manufacturer. So it's always important to make sure you identify that point because you don't want to cause any other damage underneath your car necessarily. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your handbrake is up when we are doing this jacking so that the car doesn't move anywhere, and then we're going to want to make sure that we've got a firm, flat base to do this on. You wouldn't want to do this on something loose or on a slope. Okay, so I've got the jack into position, and now we're going to just loosen the wheel nuts. Okay, so the wheel nuts are loose, and now I'm going to jack the car up and put in the jack stand before I actually take the wheel off. Okay, so I've got a quite a nice location here for my jack stand, and I put it onto one of the struts for the wheel. Now, I've made sure that there's nothing that's going to come in contact here that could be damaged when we load the car down onto it. And it's got a nice flat, firm base as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now um, 
jack this down a bit until I'm resting on top of my jack stand. Okay, so you can see what I've done here is I've got my jack stand in place, that's nice and secure and it's holding the car, and then I've loosened this jack down so it's, all the weight is resting on here, but I've left it in place just in case. I like to be very, very cautious. So now I'm going to remove the wheel. So the wheel's off, and as an, an additional caution, I always like to put the wheel underneath the car as well. Although this is quite a high SUV, if both of these were to fail and it were to drop, I'm hoping that it would at least keep the, uh, the suspension and whatnot here off the ground from getting damaged. Um, but if the car was to drop like that, we'd have a bigger issue. So the rest of the job's going to be very dirty, and you might want to put on some gloves. You're going to get full of grease and dirt, because as your brake pads wear down, there's tons of dust that they create and it gets all over what's going on inside here. So I'm going to put in some gloves, and then we'll carry on. So this is what's actually holding your brakes in place. So you've got this whole uh, caliper arrangement here, and this here is actually the brake pad. So it's very easy to change. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just undo these two bolts at the back here. And once I've undone the bottom one and loosened the top one, I should be able to actually just flip this whole section up here and gain access to the pads. Maybe not. We might have to remove it completely, but we'll see. One thing you want to be careful of is this is your brake line coming in and um, you want to put as little pressure or as little um, sort of stress on this as possible because you don't want to create a rupture or damage your brake line in any way because that can be dangerous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these two bolts and then I'm going to remove this. So I see what's happening on these back brakes. There's actually a nut here that I, that's turning as I unscrew them. So I'm just going to get a spanner to hold that nut in place as I undo the bolt. Okay, so I've taken the bottom bolt out, and that means this whole assembly should be pretty loose. Now before we try and take that off, one thing we've got to remember is that we're working on the back brakes here. And because the back brakes are where your handbrake also comes, is before we try and move this, we must release the handbrake. Now I know I said you must put the handbrake on to jack the car up, and that's absolutely correct. And before you release that handbrake, what you must make sure you do is just put some blocks behind and in front of the wheels so that the car doesn't try and move forward or backwards. Now if your car's in gear, it should help as well, but uh, just make sure that the car doesn't move when you release that handbrake. So I'm just going to release the handbrake quick. Okay, now that the handbrake's been released, we see that we've got a little bit of play here. And we should be able to just flip this whole assembly out of the way. And as you can see, that happened quite easily. Now, there's quite a lot going on back here, and I don't want to move it more than I have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to find a way to, to just jack this up a bit with a piece of wood maybe. So that's kind of just to keep it out the way while I'm working here. Now you can see these are the old pads, and it's simple. You just gotta actually just remove these plates. These plates you're gonna to want to probably reuse. And then you just pop the old pad right out of its spot here. You might just have to get a screwdriver just to work it to work it out. There we go, came out easy enough. And you can see these pads are and maybe a little bit more life in them, but they're pretty warm. There's the one. The other side. So I'm just going to work this one with the screwdriver to get it out. And there's the other pad. So this is a dead easy job to do, as you can see. All of those, taking the wheel off, undone one bolt, I've loosened a second bolt, 
and I've just popped these pads off. So now, the way these brakes work is, if you can see here, let me just check if you can see. So the way this works is there's a piston here, and what happens is when you put your foot on the brake, you apply hydraulic pressure through the system, and it pushes this piston out. And that piston applies force to the brakes. And then on your, um, your brake disc here, it grips that and then it slows you down. Now, as the brakes wear, obviously this piston comes closer and closer and closer. Because when you take your foot off the brakes, the piston doesn't retract, it just stays where it is. It just takes away the pressure. And that little bit of force um, of the wheel turning is going to push those, those pads slightly apart. So it's not really in contact, but the piston doesn't retract. So because it's got so far um, pushed so far out, because the brakes pads have worn, we're going to have to push this piston back a little bit. And that's to get the new brake pads in. Now this is where you normally run into the, uh, or you could run into an issue where you actually get the um, the brake fluid coming out the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a clamp. I'm going to put it around here. And I'm just going to try and squeeze that piston right back so that I can fit the new pads in. Now I've just learned something new. But on, normally on the front brakes, you can just compress this with a clamp or something, and it'll push this piston back in place. And sometimes, apparently on uh, rear brakes, you can do the same. But this one, you can see there's a little notch here, and there's actually two other ones. This kind of piston, you actually have to rotate it back into place. You have to turn it clockwise to move it backwards. Now, there's a special tool you get to do that. I don't have that tool, but I've got a pair of pliers. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try and rotate that clockwise all the way back, into place so I can fit the new pads in. Now the whole time you see there's a rubber seal here and that's uh, it's trying to turn with so I'm just trying to push it back so it doesn't actually damage the seal that's actually around this piston. I just want to keep on turning it backwards. As I turn clockwise I'll turn that anti-clockwise. So as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a rotation and then I'm using a clamp and then actually as I clamp it then it goes back. So what's happening is as you, you're pushing it further and further back you get a tool that actually clips in here and here and as you turn it it actually compresses it at the same time. Like I said I don't have the tool so this is what I'm doing. I'm struggling along here with a rotation and then a clamp. I think I'm almost there. Okay, and I think I've got it as far back as it's gonna go. Okay, so I've got that thing compressed eventually. Now I've learned something, mm -hmm. shared it with you as well. Because it's not something I found. I actually have the service manual for this vehicle, and this is not actually mentioned in it, it just says compressed. And um, the diagram inside the service manual for this car actually looks slightly different to this. So I don't know if the brake system on this car is maybe different to to um I don't know, maybe it's changed since this, that service manual was written with this vehicle. I'm not sure. But anyway, the back um, is compressed here now, and now it's time to replace the pads. So what I've done is I've bought new pads, and I've bought these pads from Nissan. Now, I've done aftermarket pads before. Um, they work, they function, but um, the challenge sometimes is that they might not last as long, but most of the time they tend to squeak. Now, that is a bit of a, a hassle with brake pads. Squeaky brake pads are absolutely awful. Um, and it seems that it doesn't matter what you do, the the aftermarket pads always seem to squeak. So, got the pads. This is a this is a, a complete set here, a left and a right. So, this one goes on the inside, and I know that because I took the inside one off, and this is it was the same as this one. And the difference is mainly between these two is that, um, well, firstly you can see that they're going to fit in like that. I guess you could look at them like that, but the way the the one came off. The inside one had this little wear indicator, and that little wear indicator actually tells you when that that's like the emergency indicator, and that is what gives you that real metal on metal screech on your brakes when they're starting to wear out. So it's got this metal wear indicator on, and if I look at the one that came out, the inside it's the same. Now you can see how worn these brake pads are if you uh, if you look at them like that. These are the old ones, obviously the new one, the huge amount of brake pad missing. So these are the new ones I'm going to put in. I've got this little shim and whatnot over here. 
before I put this in those, I'm just going to put a little bit of copper slip on these things. So what that's going to do is that's going to prevent, well, it's just going to, it's going to help lubricate this a bit and hopefully, hopefully prevent any sort of squeak or squeal out of the brakes. So let me do that quickly. So one thing you got to be careful of is that um, you'll see on these pads there's just a little notch here at the bottom. Now that notch is going to align with one of these three notches on the caliper. So you're just going to make sure that those notches are going to align when you put the caliper back in place. So when, when I put the caliper back in place I might just have to adjust it slightly just to make sure that notch over here aligns. So I'm going to put some copper slip on these. You just want to be careful. You don't want to get any sort of grease or lubricant onto your discs or onto the faces of the pads because um, obviously it's lubricant and it's going to stop the brakes from functioning. You don't want to lube up your brakes, you just want to lube up the working parts behind it to prevent any sort of squeal and squeak. And then this clips on like that. And again, where it's going to come into contact with the caliper, just a bit of grease. Now I'm just going to slot this one in, I'm going to do it from behind the car, it's easier for me to see. Okay, so that one's nicely in place at the back. Now let me quickly just do the front one. The front one's much easier because you can see exactly what you're doing, where you're doing it. Again, you just want to make sure that there's no grease on the pad itself. And then it just literally clips into place. Like that. So it's got these little springs in the front that hold it in place, and then you just push it in, and that's it. Simple as that. Alright, so now I'm going to lower my um, caliper back down, or this caliper assembly, and I'm going to make sure that that pin aligns with my brake pads. Okay, I managed to compress it just enough, and this slides on here nicely again. Okay, there we go, nicely aligned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those screws back into the bat or the bolts and then uh, then we can put the wheel back on and move over to the other side. So what I'm going to do with this bolt as well before I put in, I'm just going to put a little bit of copper slip on there as well, put it in and then I'll tighten up these two bolts that hold the caliper on. And then the same as I did the first time around, I'm just going to have to tighten this bolt here on the inside with a spanner. So I'll tighten this up nicely and then you do the same on the bottom. I'm just going to clean up nicely and now we can stick the wheel back on here lower it down okay and the same as I put on the, uh, the nuts inside I just want to put some copper slip on these guys so each one I'll just put a little bit a little bit of copper slip in here and then it helps when you're trying to remove it again in the future because it, it's not as a, it prevents it from corroding tight so you're helping your future here now I'm just going to loosely put the wheel nuts on just to hold the wheel in place but uh, you always need to be careful when tightening tightening the nuts on a wheel you shouldn't just do them in a row you actually need to work in a sort of star pattern which I'll show you now So what I'm doing here is I'm just tightening these up just so they, they're not loose. So you can see I've just tightened, tightened, tightened. And then uh, I'll give it a little bit of a tighten before I drop it onto the floor and then we'll tighten it when it's actually on the ground. This is just to make sure that the wheel is flush against the wheel assembly. Is a hot tip. If you've got lock nuts in your car and you got one of these special lock nut things, especially if they're aftermarket lock nuts like mine, I found that my standard wheel spanner, which is a, um, I'm not sure, I think this is a 20 actually. So this doesn't fit my lock my lock nut key. So I almost learned this the hard way. Well, actually, I learned it when I put the lock nuts on, but in another vehicle, I learned it the hard way. When I tried to remove the wheel, I couldn't undo this because I had to get another 18 wheel spanner so I could actually use the lock nut removal tool. So if you've got a car with lock nuts, maybe just check that it's the same size spanner. Wheels back on assembled. We've uh we're happy with our brakes there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna jack it up slightly so I can get the um, the jack stand out 
remove the jack stamp and drop this back onto the ground and then we'll tighten this properly. Okay, so whenever you're tightening your wheel nuts, you want to make sure that you go in in like a star pattern. So you don't want to go one, two, three, four, five, because it's not going to give you the right sort of, um, well, what do you we call it, like a talking pattern on your wheel. So if you want to have your wheel secured the best way and safest way, you must just follow a pattern. And it's easy. You start with one, and then you just move across from it. So you tighten that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And then you just continue doing that until all the nuts are really nice and tight. So remember the rule, righty tighty. As you can see, the car's moving around a bit, and that's because I um, released the handbrake so I could get the back brakes off. So just always be aware of that. Um, and that's why I said you must definitely put some bricks in front of the front wheels just to make sure that the car doesn't roll off the stands while you're busy trying to work. Now ideally you would do this with a torque wrench just to make sure you get the right torque. I don't have a torque wrench. So you just go until it's tight. But on the upside I know my car is going in tomorrow and they will take the wheels off at the dealership um, as part of the service. So they'll definitely check that it's torqued right as well. Okay. There we go, nice and tight. So, done the, this side, the driver's side, we're gonna move on to the passenger side quickly now. So I'm gonna quickly do the same on this side, and then uh, after that, I'll just show you how to finish this job up so you are still safe on the road. It's very important, the last step of this process, otherwise you could find yourself in danger. So, let me finish up this side, and then we'll carry on. Okay, cool. So I've done the other wheel. I've uh, changed the pads, done everything I need to do there. Put this on nice and tight. And now I just want to show you the final steps of this project before you get yourself into trouble. Okay, so now that you've changed the brakes, you need to remember what we did back there. So when you push your brake pedal on a car, it seems to go very far away. But at the end of the day, what it's doing at the back or in the front on the brake calipers is only moving a tiny amount. And that's because it's a big hydraulic system, which is basically a big lever. So you put a lot of, if you've got a lot of force that you put in here, and you multiply in that force until you've got a tiny movement but a lot of force on your brakes. And that's, if you were to try and stop your brakes with just the power of your foot, you'll never be able to do it. The system basically multiplies the torque or the force that is put down onto the brake pads. So we've pushed those brake pads far apart now from the, uh, from, well, we've pushed the cylinders back from the pads. Now that means when you push the brakes, it's got a long distance to travel before it's actually going to make contact. Which means if you just get in your car and drive it away right now, you're going to put your foot in the brake and it's probably going to go straight to the floor and nothing's going to happen. So before you do anything further, now that you change your pads, everything's healthy, is get in your car, pump the brake a few times, just to make sure it's nice and hard, and then start your car and do the same thing. I'm starting my car now, and I'm just going to make sure I pump my brakes to make sure they're nice and tight. So what I'm going to do, then I've done it, slowly move forward and make sure your brakes are functional. Working perfectly. And that's how you do it. That's how you change your brakes. Really easy process. Yeah, it's a bit finickety to do that little uh, twisty thing with the back help, back uh, Pistons, but you know what? You have to change your brake pads far less often than the front ones. And the front ones are much easier because you can just take a clamp and push those pistons together, slot in the new pads, and you anchor away. Now, if you're going to change your discs, it's not that much more work. I haven't really needed to do it ever. I've never done it myself, but I don't think it's much more work than what we've done today. So, I don't know why those uh, back cylinders need to be turned to get them back in. I'm going to do some research. If one of you know, please let me know in the comments. I'm very interested to know why why it's designed like that. But anyway. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, if you didn't like the video, if I did something wrong, please let me know in the comments. Give the video a like if you want. Consider subscribing to the channel and stay safe.